Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. And in this episode, we're having a look at Drumkit, the newest plugin, AUV3 plugin from Frederick Anton Corvus, the same guy who made that beautiful, beautiful Altessa reverb. Now, this video is pretty much going to be a tutorial over how you operate Drumkit here. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be one of those straight up hack attack tutorials with all of the arrows and the little boxes and the stuff that drives me mad to make and I'm literally losing my mind, I think. It's a good thing that I didn't stress this video because I've been talking to Fred Anton Corvest about drum kit behind the scenes, basically asking him about his inspiration for this thing. And during our conversations, he said that he had listened in to the live stream I did in where I was building drums from scratch, 16 of them, a full kit for FAC drum kit containing water samples, a water drum kit basically. Viewers in the chat were very helpful and they helped me out with choosing a name for this drum kit and we decided to call it Hack 2O Liquid Hydro Drop Pop. Well, in that stream, he heard me say that I was going to share that kit with everyone in the community in my next video, this video that you're watching right now. So yeah, you can find a link down below, but there is something you need to know. You see, Fred told me that it's not that straightforward sharing kits from drum kit right now, because the way that it works is that it does not pack the waveforms or the samples into the preset file. So if you just load the preset file, you're not gonna find any of my water samples in there. You're gonna have to load them manually, which is why I have in the zipped file down there, provided a folder called FAC drum kit preset. And in it, you will be able to find the preset file. And then you will be able to find all of the samples that are supposed to go to all of these slots. And I've also made sure to number them so that they're numbered after the slots. Now you'll also be able to find two other folders in there. You see, I wanted to make sure that everybody could use these sounds. And so if you do not own FAC drum kit, then you can still get the Hack 2O Liquid Hydro Drop Pop drum kit as samples. Now, if you're feeling hot because it is getting hot outside, then don't worry because there is water in the tank. You see, here we have all of the original water samples that I used to make all of these drum sounds with. And hopefully you will be able to find some use for these. So here we are in the voice editing view of drum kit. And if we take a close look, we can see that it's all segmented by these little dark lines. Basically, we have multiple boxes in here with some interesting stuff in it. Now, right here, we have a page selector. And so if we press here, we get the pads page. And if we press here, we get the mixer page. All right, so really quickly, I'm just gonna explain what these little things are here in the mixer. Basically, they're routing uh, options. And what they're doing is they're routing all of the individual instrument outputs to the master output. And why would you want to turn them off? Well, when you are using drum kit as an AUV3 multi-output plugin, that's when you want to turn them off because if you don't, you get a voice doubling uh, because now you've got 16 channels, individual channels uh, in your DAW or whatever uh, with all the sounds coming out of them. Plus they're also going out on the master output. So to avoid that, just shut these off in those situations. So let's jump back to the voice editing view because here is where we're going to spend most of our time. Over here, we have the drum kit selector. And when you're choosing something in here, you're effectively switching out all of the sounds in all these 16 slots over here. So make sure you have your stuff saved if you've been working on something before you switch something over. And the way you save is by long pressing on this preset selector here until this thing pops up and then you can just save from here. 
Right above the preset selector, we have the instrument selector, obviously, and then right beside that, we've got a trigger. Directly above the trigger, we can find mixer controls for volume and panning. To the left of the mixer controls, we can find the oscillator section, and right above that, we have the sample player section. Now we're going to dive into all the things in here, but before we do that, let's have a look at the envelope because this can be a little bit confusing, especially for beginners, because there are actually five envelopes in here. So how do we distinguish what goes where? Well, we can see that we have two labels. We have one for oscillators and one for the sampler. So these two are for the sample player, and this is an amplitude envelope, and this is a pitch envelope. On the left here, we have two amplitude envelopes. This is for oscillator one, and this is for oscillator two. And the last envelope is the pitch envelope, and this one will affect both oscillators. Now, there are more stuff you can do inside the envelope, and we'll have a look at that later, but first, let's jump back to the oscillator section, and let's get some sound going, because I wanna show you how this stuff works. And for our demonstration, what I'm going to do is to go into the browser and choose an initialized preset. Everything is reset and we can now get started. Now, the first thing I wanna do is, I wanna make sure we only focus on the oscillator section. So we're gonna turn off the sample player and we do that by pressing over here on this icon. Now the oscillator section can also be turned off with this button here, and now we have no sound. And yes, this button will turn off both oscillators at the same time. Right, so what do we actually have in here? Well, both oscillators have selectable waveforms, 16 of them, and there's quite a few to choose from. You got the regular stuff as sine waves, squares, triangular waveforms, and then you got some interesting ones like uh, metal. There's loads of stuff in here, and these 16 waveforms, as I said, is available for both oscillators. Next, there are two filters. There's a high pass filter, and there is a low pass filter. Now note that the low pass filter also has a cue point. So if we pull this up, we're gonna get a peak. Now there are two more functions in here and we're gonna have a look at the ratio. This thing actually uses the, um, the pitch ratio of oscillator two and then applies that to the pitch envelope for oscillator two. It sounds contrived, but that's what it does. So think of it as something that handles pitch for oscillator two. Now it becomes even more interesting because we have one more function in here, which is the phase modulation option. So right now it sounds like this. And if we turn it on, as you can see, even though we have minimal controls, there's a lot that can be done with this. And we have not even started going into the envelopes. So let's do that now before we even do anything with samples. So let's look at the envelope section for the oscillators. And right now I'm in the pitch envelope and it sounds kind of boring because right now it's just using this straight pitch line. To make this sound interesting, we actually have to make a proper envelope in here. So there are two ways of doing that. You can draw in your envelope and you can select already pre-made envelopes. And those can be found up here if we press this then we get this list. As you can see, we got multiple of bass drum envelopes, snare drum envelopes. There's a lot to choose from here. So let's just choose this one, number one here. Let's try another one. And another one. From here, we can pretty much drag all of these nodes any way we want. 
Oh, a highlight here. As you can see, right now we have a node selected. When you want to deselect a node, you tap anywhere in the window. As long as you don't tap any node, it's going to deselect the node. This is important. I'll show you why in a little bit. Where was I? So let's say you're happy with an envelope and the shape of the envelope, but you're not really happy with the height of the envelope or the height of the pitch, and you want to increase that. Well, you could just go in and do it manually with all the nodes, but that could mess up the envelope in the end, and you might, you know, tweak it a little bit different. So what you can do is go to the envelope option over here and shift the pitch an octave. And we can even go down seventh. This is pretty neat. But let's say you really want to fine tune stuff. Like, for instance, you want to add another node in here. How do you do that? Well, you press add and then you long press and there you have another node. Now, as long as you have the node selected, you can then easily delete it by pressing delete. But remember what I said about selecting nodes, deselecting nodes. As you can see, it just selected another node and we still have the option of deleting here. Now I'm going to deselect this and when I deselect it, look what happens to the delete function. It goes back to done. So if you are confused about why you can't find the done option, it's probably because you've got a node selected. I'm going to press done here because I feel like I'm done with the pitch and I just want to go on and head over to the first envelope for the first oscillator. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to isolate the first oscillator by pulling down the volume for oscillator two. And let's tweak this envelope a little bit. Add a node. And there I feel pretty done with that. Now again, if I'm happy with the envelope shape, but I just want to slightly decrease the amplitude, we could go into envelope and then choose gain reduction, for instance. But that's not what I'm going to do. You see, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to the second oscillator and paste this shape here. But before I do that, I'm going to pull up on the second oscillator. And now I'm going to go to envelope and paste. And there, both envelopes now have the same shape. Now we've only been dealing with um, sine waves. I'm going to choose a uh, square waveform here. And for oscillator 2, I'm going to choose a metal one. Let's pull down the volume on that one. And you know what? I'm going to delete this node and make it shorter. And now I have a clicky sound. So first when I got out, it started raining and I had to wait for the rain to relax. And now I have a group of <laughs> mini dogs in the background just making a lot of fuss and noise. So maybe you have noticed, maybe you've not. But throughout the video, I've been using this envelope with the wide mode on. And what is this? Well, basically it gives you wider control or a finer control over the attack point of the envelope. You see, if I press it, it kind of zooms out and you no longer have that really nice fine control. I don't ever use this mode because I like having that much control over my attack, especially for kick drums and snare drums. And that's pretty much how you work the oscillator and envelopes for the oscillator section. And it's actually the same thing for the sample section. So let's turn off the oscillator section, turn on the sample section. Let's move over to the amplitude envelope for the sample section. And let's add some tail to this. And this is going to make it easy for me to demonstrate the filter because the sample player section has a high pass filter with cue point. And it also has a low pass filter with cue point.
Now the main volume for the sample section is right over here. And then there is this thing that says on and off when I tap it. This is a phase inverter. So if you're getting phase issues, then you can turn the phase around 180 degrees with this function. Now up here we have a list of samples that we can use. And Fred has added 16 different types of noise samples in here. As you can see, you can switch them from the list and you can also do it by the arrows. Now you might think to yourself, what, there's only noise samples in here? Well, the thing is you can actually do a lot with noise samples, but if you want to add your own, you can also do that. And you do that by long pressing on this browser here until you get this pop up, And then you can go to, for instance, your file section. Now this window is gonna pop up. And what I usually do is I navigate to audio share where I have all of my samples. I go into one of my drum folders and then I'll just add a sound in here. This is a kick drum. And you can pretty much put anything in there, but it can only be a second long. Now they can be stereo and for the sample player, there is actually a way of controlling the stereo field of your samples. If you look here, you can see two items over here and these two you will only find inside the sampler envelope view. If we go to the uh, oscillator envelope view, you can see that these items disappear from our list. Now we go back here. The first First one is the stereo width. So if you pull it down to zero, you're basically making stuff mono. And if you pull it up, you're making it stereo. And the one underneath it sets the sample playback start. So when talking to Fred, he told me about the development cycle of DrumKit and out of everything he said, there's this one thing I wanna highlight because it's so nerdy and so interesting. You see, it doesn't matter what he works on, what app he works on, he always starts by trying to find a good name because he needs a letter in that name that he can emphasize and use as a logo. He told me that this can take a long time and for him it's like a trademark or a signature look. With this in mind, I started going through the apps that I have that Fred has made and, you know, I opened them up in a standalone mode and it turns out that when you do that, you always have that emphasized letter in the background of the plugin. And the funny thing with this is that when you open these plugins as AUV3s, I mean, the way that Fred intended you to use them, this letter can't be seen here. I just find it interesting, I find it nerdy that he starts with that and I wanted to make sure to share that with you. Thank you Fred and never stop being you. By the way, there's something I want to show you. You see the color, this color right here, we call it Falu Röd. Uh, it's a very, very you know, common color in Sweden that you use to paint your barns with. So get drum kit. If you need an AUV3 drum synthesizer slash sampler plugin, then this one is extremely powerful. And I think the drum kit is gonna become one of the most popular drum apps out there, if it hasn't already. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, uh, the dogs are chasing me away. They're puppies, they're little puppies. <sighs> okay, so if you like this video and you wanna support the channel, then throw a thumbs up in there. You know, I like the rain, but but the microphone and the iPhone does not. So I, I, I have to speed this up. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. See ya.